I'm going to play something that changed um, my whole research direction that led to a, basically a discovery in physics um, that will be familiar. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, so about eight years ago when I was a... I had a leak here. Eight years ago when I um, was a postdoc at Stanford, I got stuck, I hit a wall in a, pro a project I was working on um, having to do with quantum gravity, trying to unify quantum mechanics with Einstein's theory of general relativity. And I hit a wall, so what I did was just give, I just gave up on the physics and went to hang out with my friend, David Boyce. Oh, now it's time for this. And here's David, he's um, a great saxophone player from the Bay Area. I used to hang out with him and I noticed a book um, written by Youssef Latif and I opened a book. And this, it, this book was filled with a lot of um, scales, daunting scales, and only one diagram. I'm going to show you this diagram. And at the bottom, it said, birthday present, um, to use a flatif from John Coltrane. And this immediately struck out as a puzzle that, that Train left for Yusuf Latif, who is a great composer as well in his own right. And um, as I was staring at this thing, it caught my attention, out emerged a three-dimensional object. Okay? Um, and that three-dimensional object reminded me of the very research that I was stuck on in quantum gravity. So today I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Please bear with me. It, it took six, six years to figure this out. That's Yusuf Latif right there. So I'm going to say a little bit about quantum gravity in a nutshell. Okay. Um, so the first part of quantum gravity is quantum mechanics. The thing I want you to take away about quantum mechanics is that what, you appear, what appears to be continuous, okay, and um, continuous about matter is actually discrete when we get to atomic levels. So here's a depiction of hydrogen atom, and what we see is an electron jumping, making a quantum leap, okay, in energy, and releasing a packet of energy of, um, called a photon. This is basically how a laser works. And the other thing I want you to take away is that the act of observation participates in the outcome. Very strange, matrixy type of take on quantum mechanics. The thing I want you to take away about general relativity is that space and time, actually, and the gravitational force emerges as the warping. So space and time is a fabric that gets warped due to the presence of matter. What we're looking at here is a real picture of something called a proto-galaxy, a baby galaxy, a quasar, that is lens, it, um, a galaxy in front of it, lenses the space-time like a kaleidoscope effect and creates four copies of the galaxy. It's a very real picture. Space does get warped. And this is what a black hole does to a galaxy like our own, supermassive black hole. So quantum gravity takes both of these things, and it's taken over 75 years for physicists. This is the problem of my generation, trying to crack the code on how to f figure out quantum gravity. And the insight is that space-time becomes discrete quanta, just like the atom occurs. And also, that space-time becomes atomistic. They have discrete building blocks, just like when you zoom in in the New York Times newspaper and you see pixels, okay? And so after many years of research, my colleagues um, and I participated in some of this, um, figured out these are mathematical realizations of the atoms of space-time that tessellate this very structure of space-time that you're interacting through. Um, we call this tetrahedron, okay? Don't pay attention to these, the numbers there. So now, I want to now go back to giant steps. Think about giant steps now as quantum steps. And I'm going to show you, basically, how the structure emerges, okay? How Coltrane's puzzle that I saw was exactly that mathematical realization of quantum gravity. So here we're looking at a circle. I'm now going to paint the circle with notes. These are the circle of fifths. And I'm going to pick the most symmetric object in this, which is this triangle. Each point of that triangle is a note. And I'm going to play that for you. Any guesses? <laughs> All right. So basically, there's one note in between that. But I basically I played C, E, and A flat there. And if I continue going around this circle with these triangles, I'll get the same pattern. These are the core changes of the code. These are the code chain changes I'm showing you. Four triangles, if I play these four triangles, I come right back to the center of gravity. Now, if I go back to Yusuf Latif's puzzle, you see that's exactly what Coltrane gave him. Now, if I extend this to, four, to three dimensions, which is what Coltrane was really after, he kept talking about expansion. He was a big fan of Albert Einstein near the end of his life. He 
was making statements, of why is the universe expanding? He wanted to create expansion. If I expand this object out, I have four triangles in three dimensions, I create the tetrahedra, which is exactly the atom of space and time that we find in quantum gravity. So this is, um, I took this very seriously, and I ended up in a research project with the director of composition at NYU, Rob, Professor Robert Rowe, right down the corner, at Steinhardt. And four years later, we figured out how to generalize the structure to the, all of the four notes, that what we call tetra notes, chords, okay, in the Western musical system. And this is the answer. This is called the pentahelix. And what it is, is a reflection of tetrahedra that spiral up into like a helical structure. So it's, it's very interesting that our Western musical scale, geometrically, looks very much like the double helix of DNA. Okay? And now, even in string theory, my colleague, Professor Gates, um, has applied this to string theory, and you can see that the structure emerges there. So I just want to, you know... Um, <laughs> 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 I know, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. But th these are mathematical re realizations of theories of quantum gravity, and it's just intriguing to me and coincidental that fields that at first appear to be so disparate and unrelated by bravely and just engaging others in different fields could lead us to make surprising discoveries and insight even in our own fields uh, at home. So I, for the last two seconds, I would like to now want you to think about, I'm going to play this again, and I wonder if it's going to sound or look different to you. Mm -hmm. 